Imagine a day like any other in the serene landscapes of Yellowstone National Park. Bison graze peacefully, geysers erupt majestically, and tourists marvel at the raw beauty of nature. Yet, beneath this tranquil surface lies a colossal and slumbering giant, the Yellowstone Caldera. This supervolcano, a ticking time bomb, has the potential to unleash one of the most catastrophic natural disasters in human history. Let's delve into the scientific, geological, and hypothetical aspects of such a scenario, exploring the potential aftermath of a Yellowstone supereruption. The Yellowstone Caldera, located in the northwest corner of Wyoming, is a volcanic caldera and supervolcano. Spanning approximately 30 by 45 miles, it is one of the largest active volcanic systems in the world. Formed during the last of three supereruptions over the past 2.1 million years, its most recent eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago, creating the current caldera. Yellowstone's volcanic activity is driven by a hotspot, a plume of hot material rising from deep within the Earth's mantle. This hotspot has created a series of volcanic fields, with Yellowstone being the most recent and currently active. The caldera itself is a depression formed when the magma chamber beneath it emptied rapidly in an explosive eruption, causing the ground above to collapse. The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is immense, containing a mixture of molten rock, crystals, and gases. Seismic imaging studies have revealed two distinct magma bodies, an upper chamber about 5 miles below the surface and a larger, deeper one extending from 12 to 28 miles down. Together, they hold enough material to fill the Grand Canyon multiple times. While the likelihood of a supereruption occurring in our lifetime is extremely low, scientists estimate it at approximately 1 in 730,000 annually, the consequences of such an event would be globally catastrophic. Here's a detailed, step-by-step -step look at what might unfold if Yellowstone were to erupt. It starts with a series of intense earthquakes, a precursor to the eruption. These tremors, increasing in frequency and magnitude, signal magma moving towards the surface. As the pressure builds, the ground begins to swell and fissures open, releasing plumes of gas and ash into the atmosphere. When the eruption finally occurs, it's with unimaginable force. A colossal column of ash and gas erupts into the sky, reaching heights of up to 20 miles. Pyroclastic flows, fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter, race down the sides of the caldera at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour, incinerating everything in their path. The immediate vicinity of the eruption, including parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, is devastated. Ash blankets the landscape, buildings collapse under its weight, and infrastructure is destroyed. The pyroclastic flows have obliterated an area the size of several large cities, leaving behind a wasteland. Ashfall extends far beyond the immediate blast zone. Depending on wind patterns, significant ash deposits could cover much of the continental United States. Areas within a 500-mile radius might see several inches to feet of ash, disrupting transportation, power grids, and water supplies. The fine particles in the ash could contaminate water sources, damage machinery, and pose severe respiratory health risks. The eruption injects vast quantities of sulfur dioxide (SO2) into the stratosphere, creating sulfate aerosols that reflect sunlight and cool the Earth's surface. This volcanic winter could drop global temperatures by several degrees, affecting weather patterns, agricultural productivity, and ecosystems worldwide. The ash cloud continues to circumnavigate the globe, disrupting air travel and causing prolonged periods of darkness in many regions. Photosynthesis slows, impacting plant life and food production. The combination of ash, toxic gases, and cooler temperatures creates a challenging environment for survival. The disruption to agriculture leads to food shortages. Crops fail, and livestock suffer from contaminated water and food sources. The economic impact is profound, with supply chains broken and trade halted. Governments and international organizations struggle to provide aid and maintain order amidst the chaos. Public health crises emerge as respiratory illnesses spike, and clean water becomes scarce. The ash-laden landscape poses long-term health hazards, particularly for vulnerable populations. Migration patterns shift as people flee the most affected areas, leading to overpopulation and resource strain in safer regions. The Earth's climate gradually stabilizes, 
but the social and environmental scars remain. Ash layers slowly erode, and ecosystems begin to recover, though some species face extinction. Human societies adapt to new agricultural methods and living conditions. Efforts to rebuild infrastructure and communities take years, if not decades. Economic systems slowly recover, but the memory of the disaster lingers. Scientific research into supervolcanoes intensifies, aiming to better predict and mitigate future eruptions. Prior to the catastrophic eruption, the Yellowstone region would likely experience significant geological unrest. Scientists would monitor a series of warning signs, including increased seismic activity, ground deformation, and changes in gas emissions. These precursors, while alarming, do not guarantee an eruption but indicate a heightened state of volcanic activity. One of the first signs of an impending eruption would be a significant increase in earthquake activity. Yellowstone is already one of the most seismically active areas in the United States, experiencing thousands of small earthquakes annually. However, a marked increase in both the frequency and magnitude of these quakes would signal that magma is moving toward the surface. As magma accumulates beneath the surface, it would cause the ground above to swell and deform. This uplift can be measured using GPS and satellite data. In the past, ground deformation at Yellowstone has been observed, but not at the scale that would precede a supereruption. A rapid and significant uplift would be a critical warning sign. Changes in the composition and amount of gas emissions from Yellowstone's geothermal features would also indicate increased volcanic activity. Scientists monitor emissions of carbon dioxide, CO2, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and other gases. A sudden spike in these emissions would suggest that magma is nearing the surface. When the supereruption begins, it would start with a massive explosion as the pressure within the magma chamber is released. The initial blast would be catastrophic, ejecting vast amounts of ash, rock, and gas into the atmosphere. The force of the explosion would be equivalent to hundreds of nuclear bombs detonating simultaneously. The eruption would generate pyroclastic flows, deadly, fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic debris. These flows can travel at speeds of over 100 miles per hour and reach temperatures of up to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything in their path would be incinerated almost instantly. These flows could cover thousands of square miles, destroying everything in their path. The eruption would eject a massive column of ash and gas into the stratosphere. The ash would be carried by prevailing winds, spreading across much of North America and beyond. The immediate impact of the ashfall would be devastating. Infrastructure damage, buildings, roads, and other infrastructure would collapse under the weight of the ash. Electrical grids would fail as power lines snap and substations are buried. Health risks, inhalation of fine ash particles would cause severe respiratory issues, particularly for those with pre-existing conditions. Hospitals would be overwhelmed with cases of ash inhalation. Water contamination, ash would contaminate water supplies, making it unsafe to drink. Emergency services would struggle to provide clean water to affected areas. Transportation disruption, ashfall would ground airplanes, halt train services, and make road travel hazardous. The transportation network would come to a standstill, complicating rescue and relief efforts. One of the most significant long-term effects of the Yellowstone supereruption would be the injection of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. This would form sulfate aerosols that reflect sunlight, causing a temporary cooling of the Earth's surface, a phenomenon known as volcanic winter. Global temperatures could drop by several degrees Celsius, leading to shorter growing seasons and widespread crop failures. The reduced sunlight would impact photosynthesis, slowing plant growth and reducing agricultural yields. The cooling effect would alter global weather patterns, leading to unusual and extreme weather events. Some regions might experience severe droughts, while others could face intense rainfall and flooding. The disruption of the jet stream could result in prolonged winters and colder than normal temperatures for several years. The combination of immediate devastation and long-term climate impacts would have profound societal and economic consequences. The global economy would be severely disrupted, with supply chains broken and trade networks paralyzed. The volcanic winter would lead to widespread crop failures, causing food shortages and skyrocketing prices. Famine could become a reality in many parts of the world, particularly in regions that rely heavily on agriculture. 
the ash fall would lead to a public health crisis, with respiratory illnesses spiking and hospitals overwhelmed. Long-term exposure to ash could cause chronic health issues, particularly in children and the elderly. As conditions worsen, people would flee the most affected areas, leading to mass migration and refugee crises. Countries would struggle to accommodate the influx of people, leading to overcrowding and resource strain in safer regions. Rebuilding from such a disaster would be a monumental task. The ash-covered landscape would require extensive cleanup, and the infrastructure would need to be reconstructed from the ground up. Here's a more detailed look at the potential recovery process. Ash removal would be a top priority. Heavy machinery would be deployed to clear roads, rooftops, and public spaces. This process would be labor-intensive and time-consuming, given the vast areas affected. Power lines, water treatment facilities, and transportation networks would need to be rebuilt to restore basic services. Governments and international organizations would mobilize resources to assist in these efforts, but the sheer scale of the damage would pose significant logistical challenges. Rejuvenating agriculture would be critical to addressing food shortages. The ash, rich in minerals would eventually improve soil fertility, but it would initially render farmland unusable. Farmers would need to clear ash deposits and rehabilitate the soil, a process that could take years. International aid and technological assistance would be essential in accelerating agricultural recovery and preventing famine. The economic impact of the eruption would be felt worldwide. Key industries, particularly those reliant on affected regions, would face severe disruptions. Governments would need to implement economic relief packages, rebuild trade networks, and provide support to businesses and workers. The global economy would slowly recover, but the process would be marked by significant hardship and uncertainty. The psychological toll on the affected populations would be immense. Survivors would grapple with trauma, loss, and the challenge of rebuilding their lives. Mental health services would be crucial in helping communities cope with the aftermath. Additionally, the social fabric of affected regions would be tested as communities work together to rebuild and recover. The natural environment would also begin a slow recovery. Ash deposits would gradually erode, and ecosystems would adapt to the new conditions. Some species might face extinction, while others could thrive in the altered landscape. Conservation efforts would be necessary to protect vulnerable species and restore natural habitats. The eruption would likely spur significant advancements in volcanic monitoring and disaster preparedness. The scientific community would intensify research on supervolcanoes, aiming to better understand their behavior and develop more accurate prediction models. Technological innovations in monitoring equipment and data analysis would improve our ability to predict and respond to future volcanic events. Global cooperation would be essential in managing the aftermath of the eruption. Countries around the world would need to work together to provide humanitarian aid, share resources, and support recovery efforts. The disaster could foster a renewed sense of global solidarity and cooperation, highlighting the interconnectedness of our world. In the wake of the eruption, governments and organizations would likely re-evaluate and strengthen disaster preparedness plans. This could include investing in better infrastructure, improving early warning systems, and educating the public on emergency response procedures. The goal would be to mitigate the impact of future eruptions and ensure a quicker, more effective response. The hypothetical eruption of the Yellowstone caldera would serve as a sobering reminder of the power of nature and the importance of preparedness. It would underscore the need for continuous scientific research, robust infrastructure, and international cooperation in the face of natural disasters. The lessons learned from such an event would be invaluable in improving our resilience to future volcanic threats. The Yellowstone caldera, a symbol of both natural beauty and geological volatility, continues to captivate and caution humanity. While a supereruption remains an unlikely event, understanding its potential impact underscores the importance of preparedness and scientific research. As we gaze upon its geysers and hot springs, we are reminded of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our planet. The story of Yellowstone is a testament to the forces that shape our world and a call to respect and understand the natural processes that govern our existence. Scientific inquiry into Yellowstone and other supervolcanoes must continue unabated.
Continuous monitoring, research, and advancements in technology are crucial in improving our understanding of these geological giants. By expanding our knowledge, we can better predict potential eruptions and develop effective strategies to mitigate their impact. The quest for knowledge about Yellowstone is not just about understanding a single supervolcano but about gaining insights into the broader mechanisms that drive our planet's geological activity. Developing strategies to mitigate the impact of a supereruption would be a global priority. These strategies could include Enhanced monitoring systems, investing in state-of-the-art monitoring equipment to detect early warning signs of an eruption. Infrastructure reinforcement, designing and building infrastructure that can withstand ashfall and seismic activity. Public education, implementing comprehensive education programs to inform the public about volcanic risks and emergency preparedness. International collaboration, establishing international protocols for disaster response and resource sharing. Scientific research, funding research initiatives to explore new methods of predicting and mitigating volcanic eruptions. The human aspect of a Yellowstone supereruption would be profound. Communities living in and around the affected areas would face unparalleled challenges. From immediate survival to long-term recovery, the human spirit would be tested. Yet, history has shown that in the face of adversity, communities can come together, rebuild, and emerge stronger. The stories of resilience and solidarity that would emerge from such a disaster would be a testament to the indomitable human spirit. The potential eruption of the Yellowstone caldera serves as a clarion call for preparedness. While the odds of such an event occurring in our lifetime are slim, the consequences would be too severe to ignore. Preparedness is not just about building physical defenses but about fostering a culture of awareness and resilience. It is about equipping ourselves with the knowledge and tools needed to navigate the uncertainties of our world. As we contemplate the possibility of a Yellowstone supereruption, we are reminded of the delicate balance that sustains life on Earth. The forces beneath our feet are powerful and unpredictable, shaping the very fabric of our existence. The story of Yellowstone is a story of awe-inspiring beauty and unimaginable power. It is a story that urges us to respect and understand the natural world, to prepare for the unknown, and to cherish the fragile stability that allows life to flourish. In the end, the hypothetical scenario of a Yellowstone supereruption is a stark reminder of our place within the natural order. It challenges us to look beyond the immediate and consider the long-term impacts of our actions and preparedness. It calls on us to be vigilant stewards of our planet, to advance our scientific understanding, and to work together in the face of potential global threats. The tale of Yellowstone is not just a story of a supervolcano, it is a story of humanity's ongoing quest to understand and coexist with the powerful forces of nature.